five minutes. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, gentlemen, for being here. I want to be clear. I am not an actuary either. None of my colleagues here are actuaries, but we all play one on TV. <laughs> so we pretend to know all these things, but we don't. Uh, and I just want to tell you that Mr. Kildee uh, just asked a serious question that I thought, but I'm not going to ask the question. He might when it's his turn. Uh, would any of you invest in the Department of Homeland Security <laughs> today? Uh, I, I would think if you do, good luck to you, because I wouldn't. But I want to get to my issues. Honestly, this is the 85th hearing. I think that's an official count that we've had in the FHA in the last year. It's always the same. The concerns are legitimate. The differences are statistical, and they're, uh, they're not objective, they're subjective. What should society be doing? How much should we be risking? Good questions, serious questions. At the same time, since we started these hearings, the MMI fund has stabilized. Not a single penny of taxpayer dollar has been used. The only reason it was accessed is because a law says it must be accessed. On top of that, private capital has come back into the market, and the FHA's share has been reduced. The numbers I have is from 1.8 million in 2009 to 786,000 last year. We're heading in the right direction by anybody's measure. We're not arguing basics here. We're arguing, not even arguing, we're discussing details and where the margins are. All good, all important, but to be perfectly honest, it's not worth an 85th, 86th, 87th, and 88th hearing unless there is a change to that direction. We're heading in the right direction by everyone's estimate. Is that a wrong? Does anybody disagree that we are heading in the right direction? I think the answer is you agree. Just one comment in terms of uh, Mr. Holtzikon's testimony. One thing that changes with this price increase is that trajectory in market share has the potential to change. I, I, everything and has a potential to change. I could lose an election. I mean, you could lose your job. Yeah. Anything can change. But at the moment, based on recent history, things are heading in the right direction. So I think, these, not that these discussions aren't important, but I really think we should have a hearing on other things. So all that being said, I, I want to talk about a couple of things that are still funny. And Mr. Rossi, really, I want to start with you. For a couple of years now, I've been arguing, and it turns out, apparently, you have argued that the receivership of Fannie and Freddie has now overstayed its need and necessity and should be ended. And we should stop this ridiculous sweep of profits. Now, you might want to, then we could argue about Fannie and Freddie fees and what to do with the money, different issue. Right now, it's being used as a piggy bank by the federal government for no particular purpose, doesn't help the housing market, doesn't help anybody in private industry that I know of. Mr. Rossi, do you, did I read your stuff right, that you think that the receivership should be ended because it's no longer necessary? Yeah, you, uh, and the context for that, uh, uh, Congressman, was the following. It was uh, as much out of exasperation when I was, I've been following this too, it almost feels like Groundhog Day at times, <laughs> um, where we've had, um, you know, proposals to uh, to reform the GSEs at various times, and and for whatever reasons, it hasn't come to fruition. So my my point of of writing that piece or pieces was just that was to acknowledge that maybe we could take a more pragmatic approach, look at HERA, and and decide whether an administrative solution was was the answer. And here, for all intents and purposes, for those who don't know, are those reverse mortgages that every movie star in the world apparently wants to sell me on TV. Is that right? <laughs> well, here is the, is the legislation that actually, uh, among other things, created the Federal Housing Finance Agency as well as uh, the, established, the, if you will, the, the, the way in which uh, the GSEs could Trust go. You, I'd love to talk to you more about this because this is something, honestly, I feel like I'm a voice crying in the wilderness here, but um, here I am, Mr. Pro Market, apparently. I guess I'm not as liberal as some people think. Uh, Ms. Gordon, I want to talk to you about something else, something I talked to the, the Secretary about a little while ago. Uh, these batch sales, these bulk sales of foreclosed homes. I, for one, think that we're not getting the top dollar we should be getting. I think you get much more money if you broke them up and sold them in very small batches or even individually, which might be the overhead might be a little too much individually, but certainly in small batches. And on top of that, I think you get a better bang for your buck relative to community needs. Each community is different. And if you sold them in small batches, you give an opportunity to people who actually know the local market to bid on them and fix them up and put, have a much higher incentive to fix them up and help the neighborhood. Do you think that's wrong? Do you think we should continue these massive bulk sales to invested as opposed to more community-based sales? We agree it would be much better if these could be sold to nonprofit organizations or 
in many cases, you see private investors partner with nonprofits, which sometimes can be the best of both worlds. Small pools and geographically concentrated pools really, really helps that. You can't do all of it that way because, of course, some of the stock is just, it's not going to work out that way. We've got a whole country to cover. But that would be a very good idea. It would also be a very good idea to require all investors, whether they're nonprofits or private investors, to make sure that they give the homeowner a chance to reperform or avoid foreclosure before taking them through foreclosure. And that requirement isn't in place for all of those loans right I appreciate now. It. I'll see you all at the 86th hearing. <laughs>